Yo, what's up? Circuit Score here, and today we're going to be checking out Pure Dark ELSS FSR XESS Upscaling and Frame Gen mod. Now, this is a paid mod, and this is a video that I have been putting off for a long time. This is a highly requested video in order to check out how Pure Dark will work in, in games like Skyrim, and today specifically the Nolvis mod list. So today I'm going to be showing you guys how to install this into Skyrim and we'll do some performance testing to see how well this mod actually works. And for those of you that are unfamiliar, Pure Dark is a controversial mod because it is a paid mod. And you have to pay in the Patreon $5 a month in order to get access to all of the test builds. However, the developer is a very talented developer. So depending on how you look at it, could be worth paying for support to get the DLSS upgrades to a ton of different games, as well as frame gen and also multi frame gen support on 5000 series graphics cards, which we will also be testing out today. So here we are on the Pure Dark Patreon page, and I've already paid for the membership here. If you go over to the membership tab, you can become a supporter for $5 a month and that'll give you access to all of the test builds. And if we scroll down here, you can see the quick links here and we can go ahead and hit this open server. That's gonna take us directly to the Discord link. In which case you will have to connect your Patreon and your Discord account so they can verify that you have paid so you can get access to all of these different mods. So if I scroll down here, you can see in the download section, there's a bunch of different games that you can download these mods for. And Skyrim is obviously the most popular one because it doesn't have either native DLSS or frame gen. But there's also games like Fallout 4, Red Dead Redemption 2, Baldur's Gate 3, Starfield, GTA 5, Pow World. Kingdom Come Deliverance 1, Kingdom Come Deliverance 2. So a bunch of different cool games that are available for download. So first things first here, I just want to go to the Skyrim downloads. There's a beta access as well, but we just want to use the standard build. And we're going to be using this upscaler all in one build and downloading the latest version, which is this one here. I've already saved this to my computer. We also want to go ahead and check out the upscaler installation guide. This guide will ensure that you have everything you need in order to make sure that this works correctly with Skyrim. The Skyrim is a little trickier than other games to get it to work. And in this case, I'm going to be installing this into Skyrim Novus version six mod list. And if you aren't familiar with Novus, go ahead and check out some of my other videos. I've done a full installation guide on Novus, as well as checked out some of the beta updates for Novus. It's one of the more extensive mod lists that you can download and install for Skyrim. It's honestly one of my favorites. So once we've downloaded this, I've gone ahead and created a folder for Pure Dark mods just on my gaming modding drive. It's an SSD that I use for all modding purposes. So I've just made a folder here, Pure Dark Mods, Skyrim. And then this is that build here, the Skyrim Upscaler All-in-One Build 3 Hotfix 1. Go ahead and save that already. And then the next thing we're going to want to do, I'm going to launch the Nolvis dashboard here. I'm going to go ahead and hit play. And it's going to go ahead and bring up the mod list here. And we want to install that mod into the ENB and Reshade section here at the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take that file that we downloaded, the Skyrim Upscaler All-in-One, and I'm just going to go ahead and drag and drop it into my mod list and put it here right at the bottom inside the ENB and Reshade category. And if you're doing this for other mod lists, it'll be the same thing. Just put it at the end of your load order at the very bottom. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. That all looks good to me. All right, we're going to wait for it to install. And then once it's installed, I'm just going to go ahead and hit this checkbox here to enable the mod. So the next thing I want to do, I actually want to close this mod organizer because we need to update Reshade. Nolvis specifically uses Reshade and your Skyrim mod list might not. If it doesn't, you will not have to do this step. You need to have Reshade at least 6.5 and it doesn't work with 6.6.2. It only works up to 6.6.1. So back on the Discord page here, if we scroll down, 
it'll say right here, update. Reshade, like I said, 6.6.2 isn't compatible. You'll need to install 6.6.1. So that's this file here, which I've already downloaded and put in the same folder. And it's just an exe file and all we want to do is run it it's going to give you some warnings here to say okay it's telling you it's out of date but this is the latest version that we can actually install so specifically for this you're going to want to go find your exe file now i have a couple versions of skyrim on here so i'm just going to go ahead and hit browse to go find it i've already done this earlier but i'm just doing it again to show you guys i have this installed in Nulvis folder Nalvis, Instances, Nalvis Awakening, and then Stock Game. That's where the Stock Game file is. And then we're looking for the Skyrim SE EXE file. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. Now we've told it what our Skyrim SE EXE file is. The reason we have to do this is because Nalvis actually uses an older version that's not compatible. It uses 6.1 of Reshade. Go ahead and hit Next. Rex X, yep, that looks good. Next. And then update reshade only. And then finish. And it's as simple as that. Now you should have 6.6.1 .6 of reshade for your novice. So now that we've done that, let's go ahead and launch the mod list. So going back to the directions here, the next thing we want to do is go into our SSE display tweaks mod and go and make sure that full screen is set to false and borderless upscaling is set to false as well. So in order to do that, I'm just gonna go ahead and search SSE display tweaks. Here it is, click on it. And then I'm just gonna go to this INI files tab here, click on this. This is the INI file and we're going to scroll down. So right here, full screen equals false. We want to delete this hashtag or pound sign. And then let's see. The other one was the borderless upscale. We want to make sure that's also false and it's already been deleted for the hashtag. So we can go ahead and hit the save button here and then hit close. And then a few other things to keep in mind. You want to make sure that if you have either of these mods installed, the ENB anti-aliasing or ENB frame generation, that these are not compatible with the Pure Dark mod. You will have to disable those. And then also, if you're using community shaders, you will have to rename the Skyrim upscaler.dll to Skyrim upscaler.new.dll. Now, the last thing we want to do here, we want to go back and go and find that mod that we installed, the Skyrim Upscaler AIO build. We go ahead and double click on it here and then going to go to the INI tab here. Click on our INI file. And here's some of the settings you can change prior to running Skyrim. So some of these you'll be able to do in game. There are some that you cannot do in game, like changing your DLSS quality mode. And by default, I think this actually starts with FSR 3.1. There's also FSR 4 upscaling as well. But if you have an NVIDIA GPU like me, I would recommend going with DLSS. And that is going to be zero. So we're going to go ahead and change that to zero. And then as for the DLSS upscaling technique, it is defaulted to quality. I'm actually just going to change that to balanced so we can get a little more performance. And then there's a bunch of other settings here, but the rest of this we should be able to change within the in-game menu. So I'm going to go ahead and hit save right here and then close and go ahead and launch this and test this out. All right, so here we are in Riverwood and in order to modify any of the settings and also activate this mod, we're going to want to go ahead and hit end on the keyboard. Now it's going to bring up another menu here specifically for Nulvis because it's also linked to the end menu. We're just going to close this. This does not have anything to do with the pure dark upscaler mod. And I'm going to put this in the middle of the screen and pause it so that my screen's not going all over the place. And one thing to keep in mind is the first time you hit that button, that end button, it's going to ask you to authenticate. And for me specifically, I was not able to authenticate within the game. I had to go and find the manual authenticator on the Discord. I'll show that to you guys real quick here. So if I go back to the Discord here and you go to this common questions tab and then scroll down, you can download this file here, the patreon.zip. 
which I have already downloaded and extracted. And it's just an exe file. So if we go ahead and run that exe file, it's going to bring up another window asking you if you'd like to authenticate the pure dark mods with your account. So I'm going to go ahead and hit allow. And then it also brings up this command window here. And if everything was successful, it's going to say pull one right here and you'll know that you're authenticated and it also is going to tell you right here successfully authenticated so let's go ahead and go back to game and again i'm just going to pause it we can go and check out some of these settings here so these are your mod options you've got the upscaling upscaling target resolution scale you probably just want to keep that at one if you bring it up to two you can see down here, it'll take this resolution, upscale it to a higher resolution, and then downscale it back to your native resolution, which for me is 4K. So I'm just going to keep the target resolution scale at one. And then you've got your upscaling type. We just went through that a little bit earlier in the INI file. You can change it here within the game settings. And then this is what you cannot change. You have to change this prior to launching Skyrim. We already did this earlier. We changed it to a DLSS balance profile. And then preset K, this is the transformer model. This is the latest and greatest for the NVIDIA DLSS. And then there's a few other options here. These are some of your advanced options. I'm just gonna keep all of these as default and then on top of that, you've got your enable frame generation. So if you have a 5000 series card, you can actually go as high as 4x frame generation. So let's go ahead and test this with a 2x with DLSS enabled and then balanced and then also the transformer preset K model. I'm just going to go ahead and hit end. Close this menu. And MSI Afterburner does not work with this mod. So in order to get some of these metrics, I have enabled my NVIDIA overlay. So at the top here, you can see that I'm getting 215 FPS, and that is with DLSS 4 balanced with frame generation turned on in Skyrim, which is just absolutely insane. Now I do have a 5090, so natively, I still get about 100 FPS through here, but you can see that even without the frame generation enabled, if I go ahead and turn that off here, I am still getting a higher frame rate than I would have earlier. So I'm getting about 100 in like 20 ish, whereas before I was maybe getting like about 100 or so. Let's go ahead and check out 3X and go ahead and run around a little bit more here. I just turned on, oh, I didn't hit the checkbox there. I just turned on 3X multi-frame generation since I have a 5000 series graphics card. And this is just honestly crazy. Getting 300 FPS, 4K resolution. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, I do have a 5090, but still, this is just absolutely crazy, especially with a mod list like Nulvis, which is one of the hardest mod lists to run in Skyrim. Like, this is just absolutely crazy. So, let's see. Let's do a little more testing here. Let's, let's bump it up to 4x. See how high we can push this. <laughs> All right. All right, now we're getting 400 to 430 FPS, which is just completely unnecessary, obviously. But, you know. Got him. Dang, they really increased the gore on that one. <laughs> All right, 400 FPS wolf kill. I mean, I'm not complaining. So anyway, if you guys have like a high refresh rate monitor, this is honestly one of the best ways to max out that refresh rate. Honestly crazy. And we might as well just like, let's go jump right into Whiterun, see how it runs there real quick. So I'm just gonna do a little cheat code here that so we don't have to run all the way over there. All right, so here we are in Whiterun and yeah, we're getting this is with 4X still enabled, 
and DLSS 4 balance, but 260 to 300 FPS <laughs> with 4K highly modified Skyrim. Absolutely crazy. Oh, wow. Now we're hitting almost 350, 360. All right, let's go into an interior real quick. See what we're getting there. I just want to see how high I can get this. But yeah, I mean, honestly, I know there's a lot of controversy about having a paid mod, but this is honestly pretty cool. I'm not sure I'll keep the subscription, but it is pretty awesome to be able to run this at like 4K, 400 FPS. This is Arcadia's shop. One of my favorite shops. And one thing I did notice, I kind of saw it there with some of the, um, the like leaves. You can see some of the, like the kind of weird artifacting going on. Not too crazy. It's not too noticeable, but there are going to be some trade offs to using this mod. Yeah, this is a really cool building. And let's see, I was actually expecting higher, but we are still getting a pretty solid, you know, a measly 450 FPS, you know, nothing too crazy here. 490, I mean, I guess that's okay. Four, four, oh, oh man, I was trying to get 500. We stare at the ceiling, we might be able to get 500. Nope, nope. Oh, oh, so close, 520. Nice. New record. 520 FPS in Skyrim at 4K. Why'd I have to jump over that? At 4K resolution in Nalvis. With a 5090 and a very nice CPU as well. But that's besides the point. The point is that this mod, if you do have a 5000 series card and it's like a even a 5060 or a 5070, this is a great option to run some of these crazy mod lists. And the steps that I went through earlier should work in any mod list, as long as you're a little bit familiar with Mod Organizer 2. Foolish old woman. So anyway, that'll do it for this video. If you guys have any questions, let me know down below in the comments. I'm going to be doing some more videos like this, PC performance tips and tricks. I'm trying to get a little bit more into that as well as doing some of the standard mod list reviews. So if any of that kind of content interests you, consider subscribing to the channel. And as always, have a wonderful day.